Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfred here, live from Sicily today. Of <laughs> You, Me, and Sicily. Welcome back to our channel. Or if you're new, welcome to You, Me, and Sicily, where we come to you every week talking about all things Sicilian. And we also go all over the island, portraying the people, the places, the history, the culture, the foods, and so much more. So, Alfred... We have so much to talk about today, but today is a holiday. If you're watching this on Sunday, May 1st, mm -hmm. lots to talk about on May 1st here in Italy. It's Labor Day. Today is La Festa di Lavoro, they call it, or Labor Day. It's basically a festival. I would say it's a left-wing festival. It's dedicated to workers and unions that was adopted after the Constitution was ratified in 48. As you know... The Constitution of Italy is so tilted to the left, it's beyond unbelievably ridiculous. And well, the reason it's a is, the reason is, is because when they had the vote, most of the North was either socialist or communist. And in order to get them to vote into the, the to get the vote, they had to concede a lot of, a lot of things, okay, and give power to the unions. So today is the day that the unions celebrate. Well, it's also a day to recognize workers, uh, workers also taking to the streets to fight, to fight for their rights. Union workers. And Union other workers. workers. But okay. it's a day to commemorate, to <laughs> appreciate, and to thank laborers for all, you know, for the work that they've done. But it is a national holiday, and even though it's Sunday, uh, a lot of places are open only half a day. So that's Labor Day. The other most significant thing. I that consider happened... it a day of mourning. I have to be honest with you. Why do I say that? Because it throttles so many industries. Look at Alitalia. What do you think killed Alitalia? Overblown, overstuffed, fat unions, union rights. There are 1,600 pages of uh, uh, in the Italian Civil Code on workers' rights. Try to find... If Putin was had a contract in Italy right now, he wouldn't be able to get fired. How does that sound? <laughs> all right, all right. So all to right. me, so listen, I'm a to it. it's May. It's May first, and so it is. Like, the other thing, you know, um, today is, by the way, the 75th anniversary, Alfred. You look um, beautiful. Listen, you look really beautiful today. I just want listen, you, to you just, that. you just, didn't, I'm not. I'm just going to say <laughs> about what you just said that I personally disagree with. Most of what you said. Are you a commie? So let's Are you move a commie? on. Let's move on. Today is also the 75th anniversary of the uh, Portale della Ginistra, where Salva that? Salvatore Giuliano, remember oh. him? He was a bandit, and they accused him of massacring 11 people, and that's over there by Piana del Benisi. They had a beautiful uh, celebration over there, but there is a memorial right outside of Piana del Benisi. And uh, Wait a the oldest, excuse me, and the oldest man who is the survival, 91 years old, stood there, and I was looking at some of the video, and he was reading off the names of the men, the women, and even some children that were massacred. Now, there's a lot of questions about Giuliano there and whether go. he did it. Now, he was accused of it. Uh, there are some questions whether he was even involved with it, but uh, the police and even soldiers went after him and in 1950. Uh, he was killed by soldiers. But the massacre happened in 1947 on May 1st in Porta della Ginistra. It's a beautiful. Remember we went there when we were outside of Piana del Benese? You stood there on the rocks. very spot. Yeah. I stood on the very spot and I looked over the rocks. And you know who was behind those rocks killing those innocent people? It was either the mafia who was hired to do that or it could have been the authorities. They, in my view, they set him up. Just my own opinion. And, and a lot there of people, are people who do say that. A lot of that. people happen to agree with that. The Salvatore Giuliani was a um, a stooge in that thing. Just like when he was killed. Some call him he, was, he had an interior trader who ratted him out. I think it was his cousin or something like that. There are lots of people who view Giuliani in a little bit much higher regard. Uh, regard. Why? Because he was a fighter for the independence for Sicily. Okay, now... Say what you want about that, that it's a, you know, pie-in-the-sky dream that that'll never happen. But at, th at that particular point in time, 
it was within one percentage point on the polls. It could have gone either way. And, you know, he so smuggled he in was, a lot of killed. food. He smuggled in a lot of food, he did a lot of uh, selling in the black. Of course, a lot of things were in the black back then. Yeah. And that was the initial uh, meeting that he has with police officers because they busted him and he shot, allegedly, a police officer. And then he, you know, from then on, he was a sought after man. But imagine after that massacre in 1947, when his name was, in fact, tied to uh, that massacre, they deployed hundreds of soldiers and policemen to find him. It's a very interesting story. <laughs> One of our friends has written a book on it in Italian where he makes the argument that actually he was a hero instead of a bandit. So very interesting. Did you know? that Salvatore Giuliani allegedly wrote a letter to Harry Truman when Truman was the president, offering to make Italy uh, a state. Did you know that? Yeah, that he of received course. a letter. Allegedly, he received a letter that Giuliani, Giuliani uh, wrote that we want to become a state. We don't want to become part of the communist or fascist regime that's taking, for the freedom, that's taking over in Italy. Okay, Because the Christian Democrats who seized power then after 48, the old saying is, you went to bed a fascist and you woke up as a Christian Democrat. I mean, basically, it was the same guys. They just changed their uniform, so to speak. And then they, oh, for, that I, happened they, in they kept Hungary. on oppressing the people. To that happened day, in Hungary were. when the Nazis, one day they were uh, Nazi yeah. uh, sympathizers. The next day, uh, they were communist sympathizer. So that that's happened a lot of times. You know, you want to be siding with the uh, with the winning force. You want to be siding with the people that are going to bread your butter, sort of speak. Well, so, history is written by the victors, Esther, as we both know. Okay? Yeah. So he's been painted. There's a lot of people throughout history, Italian history as well, who've been painted as schmucks uh, by the victors. Okay? In other words, they're on the losing side. And uh, going back to... Uh, those who opposed, for example, the reunification in 1861. Okay? What was that guy's name? Do you remember? Who, who opposed it? Yeah, no, no, no. Who, 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 Garibaldi? What Garibaldi, are you okay? Which, there are a lot of people that think that Garibaldi did nothing. No, well, he promised Sicily a lot, and, yeah. and Sicily got stabbed in the back and didn't get anything, but they were promised. And the unification couldn't have happened, as Garibaldi said, if it wasn't for the Sicilian support. The Sicilians supported him, they fought for him, and then what happens, the Sicilians didn't get what was promised to them. The Mezzogiorno the, from Rome down got screwed. Do you remember uh, when we were kids, they used to have a very important commercial on the American television. It was for a, a perfume called Arpege, Arpege perfume. <laughs> Promise her anything, but give her our page. That was the that was the commercial. Remember that promise her. Well, let me tell you something. The only thing the Italians got after the reunification was a bottle of our page. Okay, because the the poverty got so bad that by the end of the 19th century, the 20th century, millions were leaving Italy, especially Sicily. Huge so exodus. So you say what you Huge want about exodus. it. The elite. You see, here's the thing. We call them oligarchs today. Okay. And back in the end of the 19th century, what do you think the people in the United States were, like Rockefeller and all those other real rich people who had mansions over in in, uh, in Newport, Rhode Island, et cetera, the railroad barons? They were oligarchs. See, oligarchs have been around ab initio, go all the way back to Rome. And of you course. have the patricians and you have the plebeians, okay? Plebeians. Whatever you call them. I call them plebeians. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. So, uh, I, I went love to... I love just stirring the pot. I mean, I honestly, I love just stirring. The I know, pot. I know. So, what's going so, on over here with this right, green so let... pass and all this other stuff? Wait a sec. I want to talk about it. I went to church today to the little church near my house, not to Achitrezza, where I usually go. I want to just tell you guys. Well, first of all, here's the, you know, here's today's reading, of course, in Italian. But the cool thing, I love this priest because when you walk in, he doesn't give you the reading and, you know, the the, uh, the songs and all of that for you to look at. He gives this to you when you walk out. Why? Because he doesn't want people to sit there and read and try and listen. He wants people fully engaged and listening to him while he's speaking. So I just love that. So in case you guys are interested, this is today's... Readings. 
today's songs. Anyway, the other song thing, Did you sing song the today? other thing that happened at the end of mass, this cute little couple were walking around with a basket, handing these out with a key, a key to life. Very beautiful. It's their 50th anniversary. Enza and Giovanni, they've been married 50 years. So imagine at the end of mass, they're walking around with a basket with these little gifts for all of us. And inside you have, you know, some candied almonds and all types of candy things. Look at the presentation. Beautiful, right? And inside... Here, you can eat that. It's an almond. You break my teeth. Those <laughs> it break says, my Giovanni teeth. and Enza, 50 Anyi in Sammy, 50 years together, 19 um, April 2022. Isn't that beautiful? So what's the key to a 50-year relationship? Then, patience. Oh, patience. <laughs> is, it al- is it plenty of alcohol or what? Is plenty it of alcohol, right? plenty of all of that. Uh, okay, I want to know you guys first of all if you can hear us and if you can see us okay. Just move that, just sorry, a little honey. Bit. Uh, let me just say hello to some people. Oh, I can't do that. Whoops. <laughs> okay, uh, we've got lots of people here. Good morning to everyone. Buona domenica. Al's books are at all book, and we're coming to Sicily. Can't wait to meet Nick. Um, let's see. I love this. Buon primo maggio festa del lavoro. Bella from <coughs> Sicilia. Okay. Now, let me see here. <sighs> Today here in Sicily in day of trips to countryside, but in the weather. Yep. Where's the weather? The weather is so, so. Buongiorno, Stefania. Stefania, you know what she made? She made congilio. Agrodolce. Cornelio. No, cabbage. Agrodolce. Oh, did you say Cornelio Rabbit? Rabbit. Agrodolce. <laughs> She's the best cook in Sicily, I swear to God. What else? Out? Oh, someone's birthday. Oh, good. Bon compleanno a me, Linda Ferro. Very nice. Jody says, so much history in all areas of Sicily, for sure. All right. Paul says, it's funny that you bring this up today. I just watched again The Sicilian the other day. Have you watched that before? Yes, I have. You see, the thing was is that Julie, I want to just go back to Juliana just for one second, please, okay? The poor guy had won a single uh, uh, a bushel of wheat that he was, bringing to, he was bringing home to sell to the poor people because there was no wheat. It was all getting confiscated. Okay, for the war effort. Okay, and the cops stopped him, and they had a shootout. But the but the um, the actual um, what happened at that shootout? Who the heck knows? Who shot first? Did he shoot in defense? Okay, I mean, there's a lot there's of there's a lot of questions. There's a lot about of things that, that happened because it was a sal- May Day celebration, and there could have been some protests. There could have been a million things that was happened. he an egomaniac? The answer is in. He probably was because he was a fantastically. He looked like Hollywood. He was a Hollywood. He had very Hollywood good, good looking. Looks, okay, very good. And looking. he was on the cover. He always of had Time the magazine, little open shirt. <laughs> Time magazine and all this stuff, and the authorities that were struggling to take over at the time were not hearing about it. Okay, the the conservative authorities, probably even the church, because because he was a communist. Communists were, or socialists, were, eighth, I mean, the, the church was against that whole scene, so to speak. So, who Jody knows what has happens? a really good question. And by the way, if you guys are watching us live here, we are having a little bit of internet connection. Maybe it's Sunday, maybe it's a holiday, who the heck knows? But in any case, um, Jody has a great question. Do you think Sicily should become independent now? In my opinion, they, no. If, if the authorities quit tomorrow, by tomorrow afternoon, the mafia would move in. There is no, there's nobody, there's nobody here that can take the place of the national government. And I have to say this, for the last couple of years, since this whole pandemic broke up, I'm really thankful that we're part of the EU. Because the EU money has been flooding in and keeping, in general, Italy afloat. And, and in particular, Sicily. 
and Sicily. Sicily. You in wouldn't believe how, how much, much money. road work has been going on, yeah. how much new construction. I'm going, where is this money coming from? I mean, literally, um, in all areas, they're doing yeah, construction, I, not just right. private, but also construction of new buildings, new schools, new hospitals. I mean, it's crazy putting in new lanes everywhere. There was no work being done. And, you know, I even remember my first couple of years you were here around that yes, there was no sidewalks, all of a sudden sidewalks. Now they're building more sidewalks in more areas just just within the last year or so. If the Italians were left on their own, to their own devices, with no EU, you would have not 67 governments that have fallen since 1948, probably 77 governments would have fallen, okay? Because as soon as a new government comes in, the graft and corruption, the old boy network, and I want to say old boy network, but there's a lot of old women now in the old boy network, okay, from magistrates to senators, et cetera, ministers and so forth. It's very inclusive. But that's a minority, Al. Okay. That's it's a minority. A minority but, Not even worth mentioning. You know, how does that's the old how saying much go, of a minority the more is. things change, the more things change. The, the more things stay the same. So, I just despise the mafia and how it had plagued our culture. I just watched the movie no The kidding. Sicilian Ghost about the little boy who was kidnapped by the mafia. Just after the yeah, but you know, Sean Lewis, there are historians that do say that the mafia, the whole concept of mafia, started out here to help the poor, to help the everyday uh, workers who were at the at the mercy of the rich barons, of the rich landowners. And in fact, it was sort of a Robin Hood. Remember our friend um, Alessandro, the professor said that in fact, the whole notion of mafia, of taking care of my family started with these men robbing the rich to give to the poor. Of course, it morphed, it became criminal. It, came, it became, you know, a, you know, game of money, of power, of land. You know, you have the the Palermo versus Corleone. It was all about land. It was all about uh, control. It was all about money. So it definitely morphed in the 21st century into something different. But there are some that say that it started as a concept, as a good thing. The Catholic Church was involved with it. He, the Catholic Church was thick as thieves with, with organized crime and corruption, ab initio. Okay, I mean, from the beginning, okay? The Catholic Church has it, had its foot on the throat of the politicians for millennia in Italy, okay? How come all the holiest men, if you stop and think about it, up until the middle of the 20th century, who became popes, were always Italians? There was no other people that were holy? Only the Italians got to be popes? Stop and think about it. It wasn't until John Paul, the great, St. John Paul got in, that things began to get changed. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's been the and last to this what, 20 day, years, there are 30 people years. trying to get into some of the records during the mafia area of how much the Vatican was involved. And of course, all those they vaults the, the are, but all mafia. those vaults are yeah. closed. And, you know, we do have a friend who's a historian who's trying to get uh, that information. He's just haven't been able no, to get any access. Get? He's going to get nothing. I mean, you know, you stop and think about uh, Giuliani. Okay. Um, I've been studying about Giuliani, the guy that was a prime minister and everything else. He was he would controlled Italy for three decades, right? That guy started off uh, as a liaison with the with the with the Vatican way back when. Okay, yeah. so these these connections were were wired in. You know, I think the kids today though understand that. I think the younger generation. Yes, of course. I mean, they they're beginning to realize. Oh my God, you know, Italy. If you look at Italy today, right, with the raw materials we have, the natural resources we have, et cetera, right, especially Sicily. Why isn't Sicily, for example, well, energy independent? Well, it's a good thing that you just asked that because I interviewed Professor Rosario Ferracci about this and many other topics. And I think we're going to uh, publish that interview on Wednesday. So. That's a good uh, little hint. Uh, Nona says, do you have do you? Have to use bottled water for cooking. I wondered after hearing that you drunk the vegetables broth after cooking. Yes, yes. We because the water use... here is so calcified, it's just not healthy unless you get some kind of a filter. It costs us about between ten and twelve dollars a week for water. We buy the 
two liter bottles, and they're usually about two or three dollars for a six pack. Okay, so if we drink, you know, we probably drink maybe three or four or five a week. Or when, when in the winter time when you make soup, obviously you're using more water, right? Uh, Nick says yeah. it's a suggestion. Maybe you guys should look into Starlink Wi-Fi, and it's available in your area. It may be good alternative. Ninety nine dollars a month. You looked into cost it? prohibitive. Yeah. Yeah. It costs 99 bucks a month. All right. So listen, you guys, you know, we try to come to you a few times live. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We may go back to a little bit of uh, pre-recorded uh, in just a little bit. Some people are, we are going saying through right now? we're going through, but some people are saying it's a little bit fuzzy. But at least we sorry to hear at that. least at least we hope that we sound good. <laughs> That's the I'm sorry important to hear about thing. That. There's really nothing we can do. There's no. You know, that's one of the issues about Italy. Why is the internet so bad in Sicily? No, it's all over. Okay. I mean, it's basically in Italy. In Italy. Because in what, what they do is during busy times, like today, during a national holiday, on they the slow down that information highway. It's basically a gaff. Don't you understand? The these more big, people these big companies over here control it, and you just pay your way. Whatever you pay a month, but I know in the United States the th the thievery there is far worse than it is here. I'm talking about with Happens Verizon all over the world. or Comcast. How much are you guys paying the the for your basic cable service? It's over 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Over here, fortunately, our internet is 20 bucks a month. That's how much. That's so much we pay. Twenty. Well, in the house. Euro. Yeah. But just so you guys well, we know, so well, we, we, we can't, can't use that. the house phone. Yeah. So we're ended up going off of hotspots, which aren't always very reliable because whatever network you're on, you know, your neighbors may all be on it as well. What are you going to do? I mean, that's how it okay. goes. Those are the trade-offs you make when you live in a foreign country because we are in a foreign country. You know what, Travis? Thank you for saying that. Live, even with the sketchy connection, is way more fun than the pre-recorded. You know what? We, we've been going back and forth. What, what should we do? What should we do? But Travis, that makes us feel much, much better because we do enjoy going live. It's fun. Uh, we get to interact with you. So, all right. Well, anyway. So, the other thing, um, what do we do? We met with uh, Rosario Ferracci, and we're looking forward to... Great interview we got yesterday with Rosario that is, obviously, since we videotaped it, uh, it'll be aired on Wednesday because the yeah. stuff that he talked about he had very interesting. is very topical. We talked about the economy. Yeah. We talked about energy independence. We talk about this whole thing about <laughs> of the kids getting both the mother and father's last name. Did you guys hear about this? We talked about it on the last show. Now they made a decision on the national level, the Supreme Court of Italy, that kids can get both their mother and father current or before this law only the father's surname or last name were given to the children now they would get both of them and the jokes online are just hilarious people have been saying oh well what if i have a child uh, and his name is uh uh giuseppe maria uh, giuseppe zapala matteo well then he gets married and the woman also has two last names. So what their kids going to be? Giovanni, right. Maria, Four Patty, uh, <laughs> Zappala, whatever. So at the end, in a few generations, people are going to have sentences as their last names. And I asked him, I said, what What were they thinking? Where was the wisdom behind it? And he said, oh. There's What's no it called wisdom. now? What's There's that no big wisdom. word that everybody's using? It's not equality. No, no, what, it's what, not about that. Yeah, it is, Esther. It's all about that. Jesus. Nice to see people from Australia. Okay, so Jim... Australia is going to have a direct flight from California to Australia, a 20-hour flight. They just made a huge purchase for some Airbus 330s. Did you know that? Yeah. It's going to be the longest flight in the world. How long? 20 hours. Oh, 20 hours. 20 hours in a plane. Can you imagine that? Uh, that is Jim Fazio. Nice to see you. In fact, today they had uh, they had a press conference on the Festival of San Alfio, Philadelphia, Torino, in Tre Casani. They had the opening that ceremonies will have yesterday. May 9th and 10th. And uh, Alfred, you're going to be going there, right? I'm going there on the 10th. I like to when the Saints come out, I like to go over there this the fireworks are a little, the fireworks are so strong 
Well, I don't even know if they're going to have them this year. No, I don't, no, 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 no. They're, they're not going to have them. Right? No, actually, what happened yeah. is that they made a decision. The bishop made a decision and asked all churches during festivals not to have fireworks this year. Well, that that town ended up getting taken over by the feds a couple of years ago, you know, because of corruption. I mean, it's the same story you hear all the time. OK, the, the mayor got pinched. Uh, they stole money. Uh, it just it's disgraceful is what it is. I mean, really. Um, Paul says, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about the Aeolian Islands. Favorite island tourism is that. You got that Paul, one. I didn't. An, uh, entire episode on Selena, how to get there, you know, taking the ferry from Milazzo. I went there at in October. Yeah, October. So there weren't many tourists, uh, but it is a major tourist destination. There are seven islands. They're all more beautiful than the other. And what you can do is stay in one and then take boat rides to others. Um, each one has a topography that is unlike anything I've seen in Sicily. It's a far different uh, type of area. Uh, it is a little bit more costly because it's very touristy. Um, beautiful sunsets, beautiful sunrises, great foods. Um, very, very much highly recommend going to the Aeolian Islands. There's, as I said, there's seven you probably couldn't do all of them, but pick some. And Salima is not one of the most popular uh, destinations. P places like Volcano or Stromboli, they're very much um, places that people uh, go to. So there's more tourists. Uh, Panadea also. So Salami, it's in our playlist. Explore Sicily. Check it out. All right. You can get there by the... Uh... You got there by a ferry, right? Yeah, you take the ferry from Milazzo, yeah, and then it stops at some of the other islands until you arrive on your. Can you island. take the hydrofoil too? Yeah, yeah, you can take the hydrofoil too. So there's a couple of ways to get there. That's great. Uh, the Sicily celebrate Mother's Day like North America. It is on May eighth, so next week will be Mother's Day. Uh, Vince wants to know Nespoli are out yet very sporadically. They're a coming few out, not here, yet. A few, no, there are a few, but not, you know, in great, great abundance. Uh, we'll need larger gravestones to accommodate the multiple names. You're right. Hey, Peter Scapoletti, how are you feeling See, thinking about you? To, imagine if you had one of those really elongated names. How are you going to fill up the names on your college boards? <laughs> You know, you have to color in the little dots if they still do that, or on your license. No, it's just a joke. Or it's on your it's just a joke. I but I still haven't. That. There's a lot of problems that's going to happen. I mean, I just still haven't gotten a some kind of an answer of what was the thinking behind it. Honestly, of all the problems because that he, Italy has, spend that I mean, much honestly, time on that. I mean, I come on, right? We have people making six hundred euro a month over here on unemployment. Welfare, okay, six hundred bucks a month. You kidding me, right? And then, and they're worried about that. And then that gobbled up a lot of the headlines this week too. <laughs> it's really crazy. Did. Um, oh wait a minute, There's Jim one wants to thing. know, uh, Professor Chipola, not Chipotle. Chipola, yeah, I love it, Chipola. No, but he's a... coming. He's coming in June, so we're hoping to meet up with him and do a few more interviews. I'm wondering what you guys want to know from him. Hey, do you guys know this guy, this professor? Uh, from uh, Northern Italy, his name is Professor Orsini, O R S I N N I. You have a chance to research this mo this moron. And I can't believe that this guy is a professor. I can't even believe he's a high school graduate. Well, matter stop, of fact, stop, wait a minute, stop. don't interrupt me now. Stop. He's a moron. But in any case, in Italy, you have uh, everybody has to pay a tax to support the Ray stations. R A I. Right. Rye stations. There are three of them. Which is like the Public. BBC. We pay 10 bucks a month, even though we don't have a TV. Everybody gets a bill. It's on their electric bill, right? But if you can get on that, you're in good shape. This guy got on, and he's got a following up in the north with the socialists and the communists. And he has been saying the most vile things about the Ukrainians' right to defend themselves and about Italy being even involved well, he's, in the he's, first place. Well, he's been right? saying some outrageous Com things. And now people are going, in Sicily, they're going bananas. Well, all over Italy, Why complaining. Why are we paying money so that this moron, moron could get airtime? 
a lot of air time. It's so people are, are writing petitions. They're protesting that they're going to stop uh, paying the tax because it is a tax. So it's a very interesting situation going We're on seeing here. Google this guy, right? I mean, he's, he's great. He wants to surrender. He says, well, let's just give... Let's just give. No, he said we don't want to be. He said Italy should not be involved at all, not giving arms, nothing to. Then why are they in NATO? And then he blames the United States. Listen, there's characters like, excuse me, there's characters like this everywhere, right? They will say outrageous things, get attention, get a rise out of people. Oh, wait, I know someone like that. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Let me say this, okay? The Italian record as a war, warring nation since the 20th century isn't very good, is it? Huh? It got beat. The First World War, it switched sides. Second World War, it surrendered in 43. Am I I right? Now, the military today is small, about 200,000 strong, but tough, okay? And it's volunteer, professional. There's no conscriptions over here. So this guy, Orsini... Probably wears a dress when he's home. Stop it. Right? Stop it. And if he was a tank Basta. commander, he'd be going backwards. Basta. Right? Daniel Ford is here. Ciao, Daniel. Danny Ford? Danny Ford is Danny. here. I love Danny. Yeah, exactly what I, I said. I owe him the, a dinner. The U.S. isn't far behind outrageous TV. That's it. That's What's all that? it is. That's all it is. It's people saying outrageous things to get attention and get a rise out of people. Um, Sean Lewis, I have no idea what the book is that was at the end. And it wasn't Gaetano. I think it was Alessandro. But I will ask him. Who? Alessandro. When we interviewed him about oh, a, geez, a few things. He there was a table. B- Babylonian language school, from what I'm hearing, has, has uh, uh, Sean, Sean I agree with him. I, I do hate it when we go political. Is it unavoidable? No, on not, Let's not, move on. Sean, yes, believe you are. me. Believe I'm not me, being political at all. Okay? Believe me if... I'm not being political at all. However, all right, let's move on. Wait a second. Stop, will you? Let's move Such on. Such a pacifist. Uh, <laughs> I love when I say that to her. But, you know, people are hammering uh, uh, Italy about the world is going to end practically. The world's not going to end. We're not going to die. Okay? No one's going to die. What are you die. talking about? That, that they're going to use nuclear bombs right, can and we, this and can that. Can we blah, just blah, blah. move on? Relax. It's can not we move happen. on? What? People don't come here to listen to you talk about that. Let's I'm move on. Basta. All right. Basta. All right. I want to hear what you guys want to hear more about. We got a little bit. I, okay. So here's a little behind the scenes stuff. Okay. So when we go live, like we are here right now, I come out here about 20 minutes early to check the internet, to make sure the lighting is good, the sound is good, blah, blah, blah. We got a little bit stressed, I have to tell you. When the internet, because we do an UCLA speed test, when the internet was going, whoa, 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 just barely looking like we could go broadcast. So we were a little bit stressed. So Alfred is having a, a little bit of a drink <laughs> right now. Vince, I agree. Let's move on. I'm not stressed. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Really? Uh, what did we have for lunch? Oh, we had some leftover broccoli and pasta. That Grow it in good. a victory garden. <laughs> and then we and then we had uh some chicken wings that were terrible, barbecued chicken wings that were absolutely terrible. They were awful. And then awful. and then oh I gotta show them my lettuce. Oh, I gotta show you guys this. You leave me alone on the So anyway, oh, I'm gonna get back to what I was I'll saying. Move I'm on. <laughs> so Jim, I have to show you this, okay? Before what she's doing over here. These look familiar, these peeps. You know what the story is with these peeps? We now keep them on the table in case the little banshees next door come out doing the programming. When the programming comes up, you see Esther will discreetly get up, get up, and hand the kids each a peep, and it shuts them up. It's unbelievable. Okay, this is the biggest head of lettuce I've ever seen. You see this? This is half. Half. Look at this. This is the inside. And the reason I'm showing you this is because, can you guys even get a concept of how big this is? I ate half of it. And for those of you that know me, that know that I love my lettuce, I couldn't even finish the whole thing. But the point of this is, and remember, Edna was spewing 
and getting ashes all over the place, well, it's paid off because that is the biggest head of lettuce I've ever seen. The tomatoes, all the fruits and vegetables are incredibly light. How about the strawberries light. you ate this Those week? Those were good. The strawberries, she says, was the best strawberries she ever had, and they were ginormous, too. They were from, they were local, right? Listen, everyone's saying, <laughs> please stop. Okay, the picture is getting better. Good. All right, what, nothing we can do about it. All right, what else? What are we doing this week out? Hmm? What are we doing? Oh. What do you mean? We have our oh, group coming. We have our group coming. We have our friend over here that I'm going to do some private tours with. In Achitreza, Chicastello, Catania, all our favorite places. Then we have a group of students. Listen to this. We're going to have much more about this. But from John Cabot University in Rome, they're American grad students, and they're going to be coming here with our friend Bob Tablasi and Breezy. And he's the commissioner of the New Jersey uh, American Italian Heritage Commission. No, he's the head of the Italian American, American Heritage Commission. And they are doing a tour thanks to a name, uh, a guy named Mario Morano, who is from Acireale. And this man who has passed away uh, has given a lot of money to universities or if any kind of program that brings students here to Sicily. They don't necessarily have to be Sicilian or Italian, but they have to have a curiosity and an interest in learning about Sicily. So there's gonna be six students and one teacher and Bob and Breezy will be coming around and we'll be taking them around all types of places, including Agrigento, Piazza Armerina, Ragusa. I mean, we're really going all over the place. But the highlight, I think, is going to be Acereale and the Carnevale, which is going on right now. It was postponed because of uh, COVID. But um, we're going to get to meet the bishop and also the mayor of Acereale. So I'm looking forward to that on next Saturday. So it'll be a busy little bit of time for us. I'm not <laughs> saying a word. I'm afraid to open my mouth for crazy. <laughs> well, you Jesus, know. People are uh, what today. COVID changes are effective? Thank you for that question. Leonard, uh, basically, so the government is recommending that you wear a mask after May 1st, meaning it is not, it is not uh, mandatory. So as of today, it is not mandatory to wear a mask indoors, except for number one, public transportation, including airlines, number two, indoor cinemas and theaters, and some uh, sporting events, indoor mainly. And they think that all of those will, by via, will go away um, starting on June 15th. And it was really interesting. Today, I was at the supermarket, today as in Sunday, May 1st. And there were a couple people without masks, only two of maybe like 30 people inside wearing, uh, not wearing masks. And someone said to someone, why aren't you wearing a mask? And they started this whole discussion inside the supermarket. And the guy said, didn't you hear today's, you know, today's the day that you don't have to um, wear a mask indoors anymore. And she goes, wait a second. I thought the, I thought it was on May 2nd. So there was mass confusion. The reality is the law expired on April 30th, and as of May 1st, you don't have to wear masks anymore. So, For Those of you flying home to the States from Sicily within the next couple of weeks, though, you still have to have a blood test to get into the States. Am I correct in saying that? As of as of now, yeah. As of right now, to, you have to you have to have you a have blood to have test. a test. And for those of you flying here, I believe you have to fill out the travel locator. The travel form, but locator. But you do not so need a test anymore to get into Sicily. Anymore, so you have to figure it out. The other you. thing that's interesting that's still a requirement um, is to, that those over fifty have to be vaccinated. I remember when this law went through, remember it became a law that those workers over 50, you had to get vaccinated or you can go to work. So that's, that's that still, still, that's still in existence. That's still it. No, no, no. If, that one, yes, still in wow. existence, but you don't need a green pass. You don't need to show anything to go into restaurants, cafes. So getting back to normal, just a little bit. Um, I want to answer uh, the question about, Little Tommaso next door. Somebody asked about, Paul asked about, okay, so here's the scoop with Little Tommaso, right? He's now developing some severe Banshee tech, uh, Banshee uh, habits. No, he, the kid's great. The kid's going to be two years we old next him. month. 
We're crazy about this kid, Tommaso. He's growing well. Am I correct in saying mm -hmm. that? Yeah, he he's doing much here. better. He always yells our name when he's over here. His father bought him his first soccer ball. And on the and on his deck, he kicks that soccer ball every day for 15 <laughs> to 20 minutes. The mother is pregnant, uh, Elena, and she'll be having her fourth, fourth child, which is unbelievable because the woman is only about 35 to 38. Three years. dogs. And they have three, three dogs. dogs. And it's busy next door. It's not quiet. Five, five, Starting at 730 in the morning. Weeks, in 10 weeks, <laughs> she's going to have four kids. Uh, yeah. Four kids. But, you know, she comes from a large family. I believe she has seven. seven. There's seven, seven of them. Which, Can you imagine that? Yeah. And she um, is the greatest mom. I'm telling you right now. She's a throwback mom. I just admire the heck out of her. Hard worker. Hard worker. The father is, uh, he works uh, as a uh, police officer. A police officer in the jail, the local jail over here. In Catania, yeah. With the dogs. He's in charge of the dogs, you know, the sniffing dogs and stuff. Greatest people in the world. Right? We are very, so very we're like lucky. The, I'm like the grandfather. We're so like lucky to have right these. Then. Um, awesome. Great neighbors awesome people. on all sides. Yeah. Awesome um, I made a red sauce with eggplant, green be uh, bell peppers, onion, sausage, picato. Ooh, and a cup, uh, cut up some pork chops. That sounds delicious, Jody. Okay. I never use green peppers in any of my cooking. Especially green pepper. Red, I red always do. do. I always do, especially mm -hmm. when I make the lecho, the Hungarian lecho. What do you use there? You're supposed to use green and red oh, okay. and sometimes okay. yellow if they're available. I spent most of uh, yesterday making biscotti in many different flavors. Some of my son and some for me, some for my son and some for me. So much fun making up new uh, concoctions like coconut and macaroon nuts. May that I sounds to that? delicious. Uh, Nancy, you want to hear something funny? To me, the biscottis were the ones that always looked like the letter S in the States. If you go to biscotti or else it would be square. But they would be like the same No, taste. they're the long ones, the biscotti right, that right. you get in but stores. But here, uh, the word biscotti refers to any cookie. Yeah. So uh, any cookie, okay, doesn't have to be like the ones that you and I know in the States, is referred to as a biscotti. So I remember many times when we would go for coffee at a bar, I said to the guy, give me a, a biscotti. And he'll bring something. He'll just bring something, whatever he has. I mean, it's really unbelievable the, the difference. Nick, how about a Sicilian pro pro proverb? Du su i potenti cuavi asse e cu non avi menti. There's two types of powerful, those who own too much and those who don't own a thing. That's a That's political a statement. Good That's one. a political statement. Basta, Al. Basta. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeez. Oh, okay. What's the you matter? know we'll what? This, what fruit? To, well, earlier it wasn't funny. I I don't I didn't enjoy that at all. Yes, it's good to have provocative thinking. Honey, come people on. people don't come here on Sunday to listen to that. That's stuff. the same Would five people who me? complain for no, heaven's sake. So wait to the left. Stop. Don't worry stop about it. it. Al, I call them basta. Did I call Al, them wussies? Al, a couple weeks Al, ago, I called somebody a wussy. Basta. I, I called somebody a wussy. Basta. Holy shit, I should have never done Al, that. Al, you apologize. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. apologize. Said, that was outrageous. Whatever I said, I'm sorry, okay? No, that was outrageous. Ask me if I mean it, though. Okay. Al, stop it. First Amendment. Al, stop it. <laughs> Al, stop I'm it. I'm around. Like it's not Esther, funny. Come on. It's not Ooh, funny. Jesus Esther, do you have to Lord. drive to the market and church, or can you walk from where you live? Yes, I can walk, but I drive. Because it was raining earlier. And because I was meeting my friend Vanessa, so Al, please stop. Okay, who said stop. that? Who stop, said everyone, that? everyone. You're in, it's not nice. Uh, I made Alfred's oh, pizza him. with the so oregano nice. on it yesterday. I made pizza all the time, but I wasn't using. Did you is that the recipe that I did for Alfred? Let me know. Okay, oh. Uh, <laughs> In Australia, Paul this. says I'm right, and Jody says basta. Al, you're right. Has, Bo you're right has Jody again. ever said stop it? Has, jo has Jody stop ever it. said to me non basta? But no. shoot, that's all you have. Okay, I, I Al, respect basta. your opinion. We differ basta. opinion. All right, that's it. We just differ. She could say basta. Uh, everyone, listen, I'm not offended she, that she says basta. Paul says basta. Paul says, Tony says Frank says great job, Al. No. Henry says <laughs> right, right on, on brother. No. So come on. <laughs> first of I all, hope you know. First of all, look at my tongue. 
poking around. It's poking around. All right? It's it's in my cheek. Lighten up. Can we joke about stuff? Does everything does everybody have to get into corners? Come on. Lighten up. <laughs> You're an idiot, an idiot, and an I'm idiot. I'm an idiot. So He's what? He's an idiot. God. All God right. loves us all. Listen, Left, right, I or hope, in the middle. I hope you guys are laughing. Except Yankee fans. He's not that crazy about me. But go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> and I've only had one drink, Jimmy. And I haven't. <laughs> I'm in a good mood today. What can I tell you? The Celtics are doing good. Patriots had a good draft. <laughs> Peter Schipoletti's feeling better. Life is good. <laughs> we love Alfred, but we love Esther. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I stop. love Jody like a sister. I love Jimmy like a brother. Okay, let's okay. get this straight. Okay, and I know, I know how to trigger them. I just have to say one. But why, Al? It's but, fun. That's why. I have fun. <laughs> the, the Dalai Lama says the object of life is to have fun. All right? They know I'm kidding, I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they do or not. But in the final analysis, I would step into a, front of a bullet for both of them. I love and respect Jody, and I've said it at only 10 million times on this programming. And I did the same thing with Jimmy. Okay, let's move on. Awesome. Uh, okay, Jim wants to know the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> cherries aren't out yet, so no bummer. No cherries yet. Jelsea, the no mulberry peaches. haven't been out. Peaches haven't been out. Nothing. Anything else? Right now it's at that period of time. Of in I'm, between where I saw artichokes today, but no one, you know, very the few artichokes. Smith apples are good. And um, Edna apples are good. Patricia says, I've been wanting to learn Italian. I finally learned my first Italian word, basta. Thank you. <laughs> you only hear it about 87,000 times on this program. Right? Oh, you'll hear and it from bacazzo. me. And bacazzo. You'll hear the word bacazzo. And from me, too. you hear that one million times. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, okay, let's talk about sports. Are you able to uh, stream sporting events from the U.S.? Can I, Good can question. I, can I ask that? It's Paul. Listen, yeah, go ahead. First of all, I have NFL Pass, Game Pass. It costs 220 euro a year, and you can watch all the page, all the football games you want. That's number one. But, see, l- let me tell you a secret, okay? The Patriots have won uh, six Super Bowls since I've been – since my creation, Okay. And I have never watched a Super Bowl on the television. I've always read it online, play by play, like they have on ESPN. What's that thing that you? So have when, even when they're in the Super Bowl today, or the Red Sox, by the way, when they won their first World Series, I'm a superstitious person, so I only watch the game by reading it play by play. I don't want to. What's that? Isn't there a program that you can get it live? What? Yeah. NFL, NFL, NFL pass. pass. NFL pass. I can watch the other games, but when it comes to the big game, Super Bowl, World Series, can't do it. I just can't. I don't want to break the jinx. I have a good record so far. It's going to stay that way. And I don't mind reading them either. Uh, Jody, that's a good point. Uh, Do you think that's because the weather has been so much colder than usual that is causing the lay of the spring fruits and veggies? For sure, because by now, some of these things are already here, like the cherries and mulberry. It's just been a very weird year, for sure. Jerry, are you home now? She's in uh, Libetsi. And how's the weather over there? Yesterday was a beautiful day here. It was like 70 here. It was out. I hope it was good in the beach. John Marconi, looking forward to seeing you and Alfred in September. I had a beautiful conversation with John and his wife, Gail, who will be be coming here for about um, 30 days. Imagine that, 30 days. Sitting down and talking to John, I understand he's a major importer. And, you know, with all things to see, and I did my fair share of that stuff too. So that would be nice to sit down and talk, you know, perspective. And I think one of the things that Esther told me that he – he imports our friends' oil, doesn't or he? Or he's good friends with them, and I, the, I believe the Asa, it. The Asado Asados, family, yeah. Right? Yeah. What a you small know, world, you know right? Freddie Barbera? Oh, that's right. I was going to send and him an email about that. I'm just Freddy. curious whether you know him. He, I know he, he has a big presence on the West Coast. I'm not that – and also New York. Nick says, I'm enjoying this back and forth <laughs> for its good it's fun. It's fun. Al, I'm now going to address you as Lucky Al. Thank you, because, you know, oh. you know he'll be lucky. 
if after the show, and here's another behind the scenes of Yumi and Cicely, because you bet he's going to hear it from me. <laughs> Trust me, my friend. He will hear it from me. And then mm. next time he gets political, I'm not going to squeeze his leg, tap him gently. I'm just going to turn the damn camera and put a lid on him. Somebody said last. That's it. Somebody, you know that. You would be lucky if I don't say a word to I, you I, I after the show. I put a picture show. on Facebook of her and I. It's, what, remember that person? What did the person say about you, about how beautiful you were? That was Frank Santa Maria. How, how did he say that to you? I can't remember. It was like something like the old man and the beauty or something. Remember you said that yesterday? And it's so right. You know, I'm very fortunate that she's in my life. I mean, honestly. I'm fortunate you're in my life, you know, honey. people, you know, I'm like Bill Murray. Okay, Bill Murray got, Bill Murray got into a lot of trouble. He, they closed his movies down this week for inappropriate behavior. This is serious. Yeah. And I read his, he made a public statement yesterday. He says, you know, I have to watch myself because when I was a younger kid, my version of what was funny is a lot different than today's version of things that are funny. Sometimes yeah. what I say today could be hurtful, but oh yeah, forty years ago, trust me. But no, you know, but here's in I'm my sorry opinion. If I heard anybody but feeling, but no, it's not around. about that. It's not about that. I think in today's you know political and also you know what's going on in the world. No need to mention the c word, the u word. The R word. People just want to come here and have fun, learn a little bit of history, hear us going back and forth, and not get into political discussion. That's well, my. Okay, I want to respond to that in all seriousness now. Yeah. I don't think that you should have uh, the false illusion that Italy is paradise. I, I've said that a hundred thousand oh, million times. That's it is not paradise. It's like. That's like saying an Italian saying that America is paradise because that's the which they think so. That's which the they conception think so. that you have. America is lined; the streets are lined with gold. It's a Italy is beautiful. The weather is great. Culturally, I love it, but it's replete with its own problems. But excuse okay? me, okay, historical problems. Can I different. tell you something? I point them out. That's all I do. But listen to me. Yes, I agree me. with you. I agree with you that it's a good thing to point out historical things about the situation and blah, 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 through it's good, the bad, the ugly. But when you start talking about political things that are happening today, just I just don't think it has a place over here. So there you go. We're having the whole conversation that we will have after the show on air, live for you guys, except that my, except, except that my temper is a little bit. I'm being a little bit nicer than I would be. Now, Paul asked another, and this guy Paul asked some great questions. Do I prefer you bring me peeps or peanut butter? Peeps, because peanut butter we can get from our friends at the base. So the answer is, she, and you want to know something? It's not that I eat them all, oh. because we give them away to the children here. Silence right? is golden, duct tape is silver. Oh, you know what else? Silence is golden, duct tape is silver. I love there that. You, you know what else? Maple syrup. Organic maple Don't even syrup. go there. No, 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 no. If you Don't if you're gonna go say something, you syrup. wait it. Uh, 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 uh. All right. <laughs> on that, no, wait a second. Oh, it, oh, okay. oh, if you're gonna oh. tell the story, tell I want. It. I want tell uh, the, this. Is so fun. this is what happened. So I bought maple syrup because all my friends here love maple syrup and. It's so expensive. And the by States, the way, by the, the States, way, right? the pancakes. States, right? Oh my God. Everyone, every store is starting to sell pancakes. Right? Yes. <laughs> I walked into Pagli Pogo today. Oferta, oferta. Pancake, American pancake. But maple syrup is so expensive. And here, they don't necessarily have it with maple syrup. They put Nutella. Because Nutella is good on everything, let me tell you. So in any case, so I brought them maple syrup. It made it from Boston to Istanbul. Istanbul to Catania. No problem. Then I'm unloading my bag, and it was a little bit heavier than it was supposed to. From the by, car, from the car. From the car. And by the way, I didn't have to pay anything. Turkish Airlines All just right, let right, me right, go. Right. No, that's another reason I like Turkish Airlines. Okay, okay. Twice I went with them, and I went overweight, and they just said, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay. And I was ready to give them great. credit card. Anyway, so I had to, like, hold it with two hands and drag it up the stairs 
As boom, I'm dragging boom, boom, up the boom, stairs, boom, 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 right? One of the maple syrups broke, but in you had more than one. Ah, I had two. <laughs> ah, and now the to... truth comes out. And I had it like wrapped in plastic, and you know, they had clues on it and everything. Nothing got destroyed, thank God. But guess what? But here's the long and the short of it, okay? That was a brand new bag that I paid 76 bucks for. Wait a minute. It wasn't you. That was my bag two years ago. Sweetie I bought pie. it at Target. Wait, can I finish no, that's a, that's No, that's the wrong so bag. So anyways, you know, but it's we've been looking old. for storage uh, things to put our winter clothes, okay? Because in our place and most of the places in Italy, they don't have closets. We have a motto. We have the M.Y.s, right? So I took that uh, bag of hers that was replete with... Uh, Maple syrup, but all of it. Not all. Everybody. And I washed it and dried it in the same sun. <coughs> and it makes a perfect storage thing. So it's under our bed. Peter says, I'm sorry, the lettuce seeds were too heavy. Listen, I want to answer this question <laughs> then, and then I want to wrap it up. But let me just t- tell you, too, about that. Was an, that was an old one. Uh, is Istanbul scary to connect via Turkish Airlines? No. And when I went from Catania, to Istanbul, Istanbul to Boston. My flight was delayed and I did a whole video about my stay there. Uh, It's in our channel. I found the people in Istanbul amazing, very helpful. Everyone spoke English. Uh, The food was great. Uh, Just a 30 minute drive from the airport to, um, to the hotel was very beautiful. So not scary. I am going to recommend Turkish Airlines. Uh, in my local Italian American newspaper, there was an article for the Sicilian project, and it said summer of 2021, you offered summer camps for 45 children. Is that correct? Yeah. What happened? My, not not in 2021. That must have been an old article. That's Joe Montecolono has that piece into the Italian American. Uh, that's got to be the the copy's got to be changed. That was before 40, 2021. No, we haven't no, been able to run. No, last one was for, 2020. Yeah. 2020. We 20 had was, one in 2020 um, was the last one. Yeah. What we're doing right now, but she brought it up. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer her. Right now, we're trying to make arrangements, and we'll be successful to run our first camp. And since this stupid thing started with the pandemic, in Archi Castello, in September, and we're trying to get our Brolo one up in action too. After the summer's over, I want to give us a little bit of a safety thing because. What happened the last time, we were three quarters the way through it, and then yeah. the pandemic broke. We had to close down our Connie Cate thing, uh, our class. So we're going to wait. In the meanwhile, we've given away a lot of money um, to charities, as you know. We And we have money in our bank accounts right now waiting to get going. So that's pretty much uh, what the story I'm is. looking forward to move to Sicily after my time here in Florence, but I'm a little concerned about the heat in the summer. Mm. What do you guys do to handle the extreme heat in the summer? So let me tell you. Uh, that's Paul, a great so question. A few things. Paul, that's a great question. You know, August is usually the worst time. Yeah. You know, that is the peak of the heat. A lot of people go away in uh, August or they go up to the mountains. Right? It's not humid, though. It's, it's just not. Hot. It's, it's hot. hot. It's hot. And the sun is very, very strong. I'll never forget my first summer in 2014. And so that's one of the things that people do is go up to the mountains. Obviously, as you know, there are a lot of mountain ranges uh, in Sicily and a lot of people have summer homes up there. Uh, we do have an air conditioner uh, that works, but... You know, whatever you can uh, to Only stay hydrated, to stay hydrated. Yeah. Um. You know, do most of your activity in the morning, but it's doable. It, it yeah. really is uh, doable. So, you know, my first year it was, you know, it's something to get accustomed to. But once you know it's coming, you prepare for it. You have plenty of water, uh, ice trays all over the, uh, or plenty of ice trays in the, um, freezer. in the freezer. So that's it. Uh, let me just read this one and then let's get we traveled through the old Istanbul airport and was amazing. I've heard that the new the new airport is one of the most incredible airports. And I take you around a little bit um, at video, Istanbul, yeah. on the video uh, at Istanbul airport. It was remarkable. Very flashy. Very flashy indeed. OK, uh, thank you so much for being here with you guys. Thank you for your time and thanks for sticking with us. 
Uh, we'll try to go another live. Hopefully it won't be as uh, fuzzy, but in the meantime, I hope we've provided you guys good information you can use. At least I hope we were a little bit entertaining. And we're very note, provocative. We're very provocative. <laughs> on that note. Love you guys. Okay. Ciao. Buona domenica. Buona Ciao. domenica.